This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon, and um, today I'm going to spend the uh, the the podcast this this thing that I do each day um, discussing and talking just pulling apart patience. Really, one of the um, one of the key things I see, whether it be in coaching conversations um, from a developmental standpoint, whether it be um, training conversations, um, conversations with friends, potentially conversations with myself as well. But um, the the key thing around this this idea of patience is obviously deploying it. But outside of that, it's often when we get really frustrated with things that that should be happening faster or that we want to be happening faster. Um, it's actually that. That, that frustration and the desire for things to become faster, that we start to look for, for ways to do things um, maybe outside of our values or morals or not seeing the, you know, the, the staying the course and seeing the process through. So it's usually the desire to rush things or have things happen quicker than they probably are happening, unraveling or, or, or however you want to call it. It's usually that that slows it down, Right. It's this idea that I should know that you know it should be happening faster. I want things faster. Yeah, I'm just not a patient person. I just want things done now. It's like that's all well and good, and there's a, there's a, there is definitely a a benefit to to being able to bring some sort of um, I suppose lack of patience, this more surgency to to some things. And examples that I've given in the past is like if you have a, a family member that's not well and you need to get them to the hospital, like you know really, really quickly, it's like maybe not being too patient, maybe having a little bit of impatience with that is going to be very beneficial. So it's more so understanding when we do deploy these particular traits, but the key thing with our our own development, our own unraveling and, 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 and career and life, it's like when we rush these things, we actually slow them down because we don't give it the time to that it needs to nurture. It's like it's like maybe you know cooking a good steak. Um, and I'm sorry for you vegans out there, but if I'm going to want to cook a good steak and I'm like I'm really hungry, and I know that if I cook a good steak on on relatively low, and I just let it cook and and sort of um, stay on one side for for a little while, and then I can flip it over just once, and then I turn it off and let it cool down a bit on the pan before I put it onto a plate, cool down a bit, and and go from there. And usually it's going to be really quite tender. The interesting thing is that if I'm really hungry and I want the steak done faster, right, I want it as best as I possibly can because I also don't want to just want it fast, I want it done as, as best as I possibly can, I'm going to cook it on the highest temperature. And if I cook it on the highest temperature, it, it does never comes out the same, right? You're trying to cook things in a microwave compared to the oven and it'll never come out the same as opposed to just simply staying the course and... and letting the process unfold as it does because how are we meant to know that it's meant to come faster right that, that's one of the biggest questions it's like why isn't this happening it's like what makes you think it's not it maybe it's your timeline on something that's actually um causing the issue for it to actually take longer so what's the lesson there for you is there a lesson that you may be missing out on because you're so busy thinking that the end product is actually what you what you want and what you need and what will keep you happy because more often than not, it, it, it doesn't. We may have a, a release of serotonin, dopamine, whatever it may be, at that point in time. However, it really does like come down to understanding that if you aren't happy during the process, if you can't be... It's not even really patience. It's really just trusting the process. I mean, if you're, if you're trusting the process, you don't need patience because it's not like you're patiently waiting for a particular outcome. It's like... This is just how it is unfolding. I'm doing what I can within my power to move things forward and 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 learn and apply and test and 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 love and whatever it may be. But the core of it is that we're just not smarter than the universe. Out, out of out of the whole lifespan that the universe has existed and will exist, we live in this such a tiny little window, and we are one seven billionth. Of, of humans let alone anything else during that tiny little window 
right? And then we get upset that something isn't occurring fast enough. It's like, if we get upset about that, then then we haven't stepped back far enough to see the literally the big picture and understand that there is there is so many things unfolding all at once that life is never static. It is continually, continually evolving, changing, moving, and that we are simply just one tiny little like node in all of that then we understand that we can start to trust the process because there is so many things that are outside of our control that are that are that are going into these um, into this outcome as a factor that we step back and go okay well what is in my control and and if I'm my impatience is making me feel pretty bad then maybe that's causing a lot of the problems maybe I should stop focusing on the outcome and wanting the outcome sooner and just really what am I paying attention to during the unfolding of the process because maybe your lessons are there maybe your happiness is in that right and this is one of the key things because if you think that your happiness is at the end of your uh, end of your outcome right maybe maybe the end of the the the, the school the degree uh, the business the next car um, the job, the person, if you think your happiness is there, you're going to be bitterly disappointed when that happiness wears off after a day, right? Those things are just momentary. Like True happiness is peacefulness. True happiness is being, being okay in this moment as it is, right? It doesn't mean we shouldn't look forward. Of course, we should look forward and we should do it consciously and, and, and bring a lot of awareness to that and bring that back to the present moment about what we should do in this moment. But the key thing there is really being able to step back and see such a significantly larger and bigger picture and ask, actually ask ourselves, because here's the thing about, about just being happy at the outcome, right? It doesn't mean you're not going to feel sad either, by the way. There's a lot of utility to that, lots of utility to sad and frustration and all that sort of stuff. But if we only ever get happiness at the outcome, and that's what we've trained ourselves to do, right? Then what happens is that we only have a, a very, very small number of moments in our life where we truly actually allow ourselves to feel happy. And it's like, well, if you're happy to look back, if you're happy to look back on your life, in your rocking chair when you're 75, 80, 85, whatever, and allow, knowing that you allowed yourself to be um, happy uh, however many times it was, 5, 10, 15, maybe 20, who knows, and all the other times that you just settled for, I'm not good enough, I'm not there yet, and it's always this constant just super ego pressure on ourselves to, to maybe achieve something, to get something, to get the next thing, and is it in the face of someone else, are we trying to get someone else's approval, and all of these things going on, it's like if, if, if that's how we're living, then maybe we're no longer in control. It's a big difference, right? It's like, do you have money or does money have you? Are, are, you, are you comparing? Because you, you, you can't compare your timeline to somebody else's timeline. It's their timeline. It's not for you. Your timeline's for you. And you, you're actually in your timeline right now, just as you are wherever you're at. And you don't, you're not meant to be anywhere else. This is exactly where you are. And so the question is, being happy here, how are you going to be able to put yourself in a state where you can be happy here so you can move through your timeline and not get stuck here? right? Because the universe will continue to give you the same lesson until you learn it. But the problem is, is that it keeps getting a little bit harder and it keeps getting a little bit worse when you, when you don't get the lesson. It gets worse and then worse and then worse and then worse. The universe will keep giving you the same lessons until you truly learn from it. Not just from a con like a cognitive standpoint, like an intellectually understanding standpoint, but from an actual behavior change, right? Which often comes from thinking, surprise, surprise. But that's the key thing here. And so being okay in, in your timeline where you're at allows you to see these lessons, integrate them, accept them, and then move through them. And that's how you get to the outcome faster, surprisingly enough, is when you stop focusing on the outcome. You keep it there, you think macro, but you act micro. And on that note, team, if you found this podcast beneficial, it would mean the world to me if you were to pass it on to someone else that you think would also find it beneficial. If you haven't already, then jump on Facebook, search Mood Prep Online. I'd love to see you in the group. Otherwise, team, that's it. I'm done. Until tomorrow, peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you soon.
To be everything at once Be unblinded, be unlearned Be unbridled and unburned